Okay, we're going to talk about the uh, stained glass window program in uh, Shark Cathedral. And it's this is a really important screencast, so I would take really good notes and um, maybe tell your friends that are in the class to make sure that they watch this. This is a very important screencast. Okay, so one of the most important features of Shark Cathedral is the fact that there is um, light plays such a central role, such an important feature. And um, so we have the entire uh, building is surrounded by colored light and every inch possible is opened up with the buttressing to allow for the light to be um, brought in. Um, so the church is, uh, the gallery is, is basically eliminated in this church and that allowed for these windows. Now the window program, the, the subject matter, is similar to the sculptural program on the church, but the windows were also served to instruct the populace through symbolic and iconographic imagery and narratives from the Bible. But unlike the sculpture, these windows have a mystical effect because of the light. Um, the window title that we see here, Dame de la Belle Verere, I'm sure I said that wrong, but it translates to Our Lady of the Window. And this stained glass, this actually was the, in the cathedral, and it survived the a fire in 1194 that burned down the majority of the cathedral. But this window exemplifies two styles, a transition from the early Gothic style of Mary and Christ to a mature Gothic style of the um, angels that are around um, around it. So in this one, we have Mary and Christ that are rigid and frontal in their positioning, but the angels are much more animated. One of the important things is the how the window program gives us floating planes of light. The use of light is used as a symbol of divinity, and uh, it also is um, significant because it allows our eyes to be drawn up and to look at what is in front of us with the different windows. So I'm going to move on to the next slide of the windows. And this is the rose window, also called the Lux Nova. And Chart is unique because it still retains most of its original glass windows. And um, so this is really um, just important because this cathedral actually had been ordered to be destroyed uh, during World War II. Uh, the town was invaded by the Germans and occupied by the Germans and as the Americans started pushing them back the uh, American command ordered the destruction of this cathedral because they believed that there were Germans inside it either spying or using it as a place for snipers and so there was one American uh, soldier who he and his driver went into this and went into the church and went all through it to uh, look for Germans and he came back and told him that there are no Germans there and this cathedral survived because of that brave American soldier who ended up later dying that same day um, as they pushed forward towards the German lines. Okay, so the light here is understood as being the least material of God's creation. So that's what's important is the light. It's the moment of, if you remember from the beginning of the Bible, let there be light. And so we have the separation of light from darkness. And there was light. And so that becomes a priority for the Gothic architect to allow as much light into the church as possible. And again, um, that's made possible from the flying buttresses that are supporting the structure on the outside. So the stained glass is incredibly complicated and expensive form of painting, but its effect on the emotions and our senses makes it worth it and worthwhile for the patrons um, who, who commissioned this, which would have been the local guilds surrounding the city. In the aisles and chapels where the windows are low enough to be easily seen, there are elaborate multi-scene narratives. Narratives often have allegories of major religious themes like sin and salvation. In the Clara's story windows, it is not mul a multi-figured narrative, but a large-scale single figures that can be seen at a distance. 
Uh, the blue window you're seeing, the rose window or the Lux Nova, that was actually um, paid for and dedicated um, by Louis the Ninth, and um, it's the lancets below. These five lancets below were also a gift from Louis the Ninth. We talked about with the illuminated manuscript, uh, and. Um, the rose window is 42 feet in diameter, and then the five descending lancet windows show royal and priestly heritage of Mary and Jesus, and through them, the church itself gets its prestige. The rose window related to the sculptural program outside as well. Oops, sorry, let me go back. And um, at the center of the rose window is the Virgin Mary with her child in throne, and then in the Around her, she is surrounded by doves, and uh, above her is four thrones and four angels. Then in the diamond shapes are the kings of Judea, then the 12 minor prophets, and this is supposed to link uh, God's plan for mankind. The idea is to save mankind through the prophets and through Christ. Also mention of kings are included. There are royal emblems, such as the golden fleur de lis on a gold background, and that um, fills a prominent shield under, there's also St. Anne in the bottom of the central lancet, and that's also a connection. So we can see this is what it looks like on the outside, and this is what it looks like on the inside, and it is just a gorgeous uh, example of stained glass. Okay, so... So I'm going to go back to this window just to talk about uh, Notre Dame de la Belle. And then, um, so this one dates to about 1170. The side panel with angels date to the 13th century. Those are considered high Gothic. And then given the ranges of dates, and a simple identification of Gothic is acceptable, even though we kind of have a, a separation of it. Now, in regards to its icon iconographical program, the focus of the central lancet is the Virgin Mary and Christ child. And then both the Virgin and the child look directly at the viewer. Christ extends his right hand in blessing and holds a book with the text from Isaiah related to the prophecy of the incarnation. And then above him, above them is the Holy Spirit in the form of the white dove. And that extends three rays of light to the Virgin's halo. And then six angels hold candles and incense burners that flank them in worship. Other scenes surround the virgin and child include the temptation of Christ and uh, the marriage at Cana. The window is intended to really kind of focus on the Virgin Mary's central role in the Christian mysteries of the incarnation and redemption. By presenting the Virgin Mary as the queen of heaven, or again the Theotokos, or bearer of God, we see the symbolic embodiment of the church. Her throne is not merely just a queenly throne because um, she's holding the Christ child in her lap, which is basically just, you know, God incarnate. The medium of the stained glass further makes this iconographical program even more important because the color glass was in intended to transform natural light into the mystical Lux Nova that can inspire a spiritual awakening in the viewers. As light passed through the sacred images of the Virgin and the Child on the glass, it was not only the images that were intended to be enlightened, but also the hearts and minds who viewed them. Um, so, Shark Cathedral houses that important relic we talked about. It was an important religion uh, pilgrimage destination at the time the window was made. And, um, and of course, the, it's really important because of the relic that was housed here. In the Middle Ages, Chart also had an important cathedral school. There was an education of the liberal arts here. And then that gives a virgin's position as a throne of wisdom, special meaning in connection with this cathedral school at the same place. In terms of architectural history, the window acknowledges the design of the sculpted portal on the cathedral's west facade, which includes a similar depiction. Um, it, it's also one of the few elements to survive that fire, and so it's definitely considered um, you know, a veneration object. Uh, so the Gothic period 
uh, witnessed an increase of devotion into the cult of the Virgin Mary and the veneration of her as a direct intercessor between God and the faithful. She is seen as Christ's heavenly bride and proof of his human nature. The Virgin took on new importance in worship during the Gothic period, both as a focus of personal devotion and in church services that are specifically dedicated to her. At Chartres, this is reflected in how, as queen and mother, and how often, which she's all over the church, that, um, that she is depicted. Furthermore, the Virgin Mary was interpreted as a metaphor for the church as a whole during the Gothic period, and she's becoming increasingly popular evocation of the church expanding authority, particularly the rising of urban centers in which this cathedral was um, was placed in, and the Virgin's honor during the Gothic period. So that is the iconographical uh, program of the stained glass windows at Chartres Cathedral.